Hello everyone, my name is Sam and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification, and if you get to the end and enjoyed it, give the video a thumbs up. I apologize in advance, there's probably going to be dog noises in this music because my dogs are angry that it's minus 30 something outside and they can't go outside without freezing. So it's been a chaotic couple of weeks to say the least. So I have all of the books that I've read in the past like three-ish weeks or so to give kind of some reviews on. Uh, I'm going to do it a little bit different format, especially since quite a few of these are rereads actually. So I just want to let you know that I read them basically, give you a general summary and you know if I'd suggest it or not, as well as I want to give a bit more detail so, to some of the newer releases and or some releases that aren't necessarily new but they are new books to me. Starting off quite a few weeks back, one of my goals for 2018, no, it's 2019, one of my goals for 2019 is to do a reread of the first two Truth Witch books as well as the novella Sight Witch. So I did, I started with Truth Witch by Sarah Den Susan Denard. I'm, I think this is a weird series where like I, I really enjoy it when I read it, but it's been like, this is the third time I've read it and it's been three weeks since and I literally forget, I've forgotten it all again. Like I don't know exactly why because I enjoy it I like I remember the the witches and there's the blood which I love the out like the magic and it's going to be more developed but I literally can't remember like actual details about this series it's really frustrating I read it in multiple different formats and every single time it it happens whether it's an audiobook while I'm doing other things an audiobook while I'm reading along or just reading it it happens continuously it's very annoying but it follows this world that is kind of under political turmoil where people have magical power some people want them each there's different types of witches there's a truth witch blood witch sight witch um they, they all have different skills and there is a essentially like a one kingdom trying to take over everything and someone trying to fight back against that and you have to you know the magic has kind of splintered on those sides so i i enjoy it i i really remember enjoying it every single time i read it but i can't remember much about it unfortunately i don't know why that is but yeah, so I enjoyed it. I think I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars, so I'd recommend. Maybe it's just something wrong with me. Another goal of 2019 was to do a reread of my Heidi Heelig books, basically. So I read, did a reread of The Girl From Everywhere, which is Time Traveling Pirates. And this girl's dad has an opium addiction, and he is trying to use maps. You need the map written in a certain time and place. Um, and when you use that map, you will then go to that certain time and place. But it's tricky because maps can be wishy-washy with those sorts of details so he wants to try and get back to the time when his his love her her mother was alive um and so she is half chinese and was born in hawaii so we spend a lot of time in hawaii but as well as a lot of other places but her dad has a lot of baggage obviously his drug addiction and she's got a bit of a romance going on and oh but yeah, I honestly would really, really highly recommend this book. I enjoy it every single time. It's fun. It's got lots of... It, it's, Hawaii in like the 1800s is never a book I've read, never a place I've read a book set in. So I, it's just really interesting. And it does talk a little bit about Hawaiian politics and what is going to happen in the future in Hawaii with colonization and becoming, you know, America and all that stuff. So it's it's really interesting. And I like Heidi Healy's writing an awful lot. So I... um. Yeah, highly recommend. Then I started the book East by Edith Patu, which was supposed to be a buddy read, but my friend Melanie bailed last minute. So, shame on her. This is a book she really, really wanted me to read, and she gifted it to me uh, last, my last birthday, I think? Yeah. I had never heard of it, but this book is like 10 years old, and it's a retelling of some Scandinavian folklore, I believe, and it's quite interesting. And my friend did, originally when she recommended it to me, was like, oh, I think there's indigenous people in it because that's what I do a lot for work. Uh, and then she was like, oh, I guess not, no. But it does actually specify, we'll say that in here, that she is part Inuit, which would make sense geographically with where they were. We have, you know, Inuit people now kind of where everyone's settled, but we always just think of them in Canada as being like, oh, Inuit people, they live in none of it, but like they live all over. And there were people, like there are people, Inuit people in like Greenland and Iceland and all these places. So, um, it, it was, it's, it's an interesting book. It is slower. I will absolutely say that. Um, but it's, the, our main character is Rose and it's got this Akatar vibe. It predates Akatar. I'm just referencing Akatar because it's famous 
and everyone knows it and that was what I read first but it's got this you know beast comes to essentially kidnap child and or person girl brings back to castle does weird things but can't tell why and then when she finds out it's because of a curse sort of situation there's that beauty and the beast thing um but it's really interesting the setting but it's also got a bit of like narnia vibes because there's sort of this evil queen that reminded me of i don't know is it just the ice queen in the narnia the books um but Rose has this several siblings, but her, essentially her parents give her away because um, they're told if you let my if you let me take your daughter, then your daughter that is sick will be a OK. And so they let her go, even though she sort of does accept it. Um, but her brother is not having how his parents are acting that she did a savior thing. He misses her and he wants her back. But she kind of gets to keep visiting, but she's not allowed to explain what's going on. And it's just interesting. I actually enjoyed the writing. The writing really does lend itself really, really well to like a fantasy folklore um but like i said be prepared for it to be slower and it is a bit thicker of a book i think it's 600 no it's wrong 500 pages um and i know the sequel west came out i am curious to see where that's going to go because this ties up quite uh definitively um with an epilogue and everything of what happens to the main character in the end um I actually don't mind the romance. I think it's actually quite sweet. It's it's very juvenile, um, low-key kind of background, but I think the ending is sort of sweet. It is very, very folklore fa fairy tale, not grim fairy tale-esque <laughs> sort of ending. So it was just an interesting read. I think I ended up giving it four out of five stars. Then I took my sweet time reading Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. I started this right before I left for my conference, and it took me like a week to read, which it does a disservice because this should not have taken me a week to read. It should have been able to read it in like a day and a half, but chaos was my conference. Um, but so this is book two. I don't honestly think I can actually say much about this because it is the sequel to Renegades. There are, the, um, it's in this dystopian future where essentially superheroes, uh, there's sort of rebels that are kind of fighting against the system. And then there's these good guys who, after there was a civil war, set up a new government. However, obviously it's a government. There are some serious flaws and some people abusing the system and throwing in superpowers to this is just a whole new level of chaos. So we have our main character, Nova, who is infiltrated, um, the, the good guys as a rebel and but she's kind of feeling conflicted there is some romance it is slow burn it's adorable a few romancy things do finally happen in this the first book is very slow like i oh it did things to my soul in like an amazing way but the really cool thing in here is what happens with her she takes on volunteer um hours at an archive museum of that the government runs she does it with ulterior motives but she finds a bunch of interesting things that like like just change the whole plot and i absolutely freaking love what happens with max that's all i'm gonna say the ending hurt my soul if someone dies in this series like if any of the good guys i'm not gonna be okay they're all such precious people and then there's other people that like are very like green goblin-esque that they just need to be removed okay just get rid of them all right I i'm just hoping it's sort of like a happier ending to this whole trilogy the way that she did with lunar chronicles please um the third book's title was just released this week actually it's gonna be called supernova which curious because superheroes and the main character's name is nova so i saw that title and like squealed and then my brain hasn't stopped since so it comes out in november as well also props to marissa meyer these books are like they're thick they're complex too like it's not um like there's a lot of world development character development there's a lot of characters a lot of superpowers a lot of superpower development and she has just pumped these books out solidly like within like one year but essentially of each other so like no massive weights or anything like that <gasps> love you girl highly highly recommend if you liked renegades this is a little bit less actiony it's more politics and conflicts i will say that but i really really enjoyed it i think i actually preferred this one more to the first one even though like I love the slow burn, but like getting to know Max and the good guys now, because I feel like we focused a lot on this like gray area and her people, which were interesting. And they do come into the play near the end, but we get to know more about the actual good people on the good side. I gave this book a five out of five stars. Then if you watch my videos in December, you'll know that I read a book called The Rook by Daniel O'Malley and it changed my freaking life. Well, my paperback copy of the sequel came in January or end of December. I don't know, sometime in the past like month or so. And I picked it up and read it and it was amazing. I think I still liked book one 
better because this is from a different POV. So at the end of, I can't really say much about it because it, it, it is exactly the result of what happens at the end of the first book, which is a big twist. But in this world, we have the supernatural government people that work for the British government, essentially. And in the first book, there was uh, sort of like an inner betrayal. The main character, the main character wakes up in the middle of a park, people all around her dead, and she has no memory of what's happened. And we find out there's been a betrayal within her organization. And at the end of the book, a separate sort of organization, not a government entity, and not from within Britain comes forward. And this is a continuation of that, sort of the diplomatic aspects of it. However, it's not going as easily. There's, once again, some turmoil within. I'm not saying which organization within. Um, and we have the POV of a character from this other in entity. But she also is an unreliable narrator, we shall say, kind of like the main character. She doesn't know everything. It's very clear she doesn't know everything. She also knows that things are being withheld from her. And we find out throughout there's a lot that she didn't know was even being withheld from her. Or she was told one thing and believed it because it made sense, but it turns out that those things were done for separate reasons. And I love that the two main characters are female, they're, this is written by a dude. It's not sexualizing them. And the whole premise is basically like them getting to know each other. And in the end, they be, like, they're good with each other. Like, they're tight. I freaking love this. Like, I'm, it, oh, it was just like, I need more books like this. Okay. Like, I need Daniel O'Malley to write more. This book was released, uh, I want to say in 2016, 2017. So about a year and a half, two years ago. I'm curious if there's going to write any more because there is a bit of potential at the end. It's kind of like a sort of happy ending, but could go more. So I, I don't know. There is like a three or four year gap between the first and second book too. So I don't know if I'm waiting for a third book. I hope, I hope so. And I'm also curious to see if the show they're making a stars stars is adapting this, if they will translate this, like not super sexualizing of these women, because this is an adult book. Um, and I find, especially in paranormal fantasies and whatever, the, the women get hypersexualized a lot. So that was just, oh, I loved it. It's so good. The paranormal aspects, I think, were more prevalent in book one. But I think it was more because they stood out because they're very weird. Whereas, like, in this, like, half of the characters are on an entity that are, like, weird paranormally. But they're trying to, like, be diplomatic and work together. So, highly, highly recommend the series if you haven't read it. And, yeah, five out of five stars. So, the first, if this gets a five out of five stars, then the first book should get, like, a six out of five stars or something. I don't know. But either way, I freaking loved it. And this cover is awesome. And, yes, I did not, uh, no, I did not actually stab a book. I had a couple people comment on my Instagram that is just the cover. And it's... Like the, you can see that it like rips down there and it also rips down the spine. Oh, I love this series. I also did a reread of Air Awakens by Elise Kova because I tried to read Ra Water's Wrath last month and realized about seven chapters in that I had literally no idea what was happening and it had been too long since I'd read these books. So starting to reread this series, I finished Air Awakens. I actually love this more the second time around. <laughs> Or maybe this is the third time I've read it. I don't know. But a librarian apprentice discovers that she has wind, um, magic wind elemental magic and she's the first one um in quite a few, long time that this world has known to have that but she's not supposed to um so she has to hide it has to develop it and there's a lot of political behind the scenes maneuvering that people are, are are trying to go on and there's a war as well not in the kingdom but the kingdom is a part of it and sort of pushing out and trying to colonize. So, um, yeah, love this series. Love this book. Um, Vala is like, oh, I'm trash for it. It is like, it's not an, a specifically like, like mind-blowingly unique book. It is YA fantasy, lots of good tropes with the brother love triangle and like flawed, gray, oh, misunderstood sort of Damien characters and, you know, the timid girl that both of the brothers that are insanely attractive and rich suddenly want that sort of thing. You get it. It's not unique. However, it is trash. It is my trash. I'm so like, this is, this is what I want to read it all the time. <laughs> and lastly, I read The Girl King by Mimi Yu and oh my God, I went into it and I had heard people say either they absolutely loved it or they ended up DNFing it or like meh because it was super slow. Now, no shade to anyone with the, your opinions are your opinions. But how in the heck do you consider this book slow? Within the first third, there's an assassination, an assassination attempt, um, a, a basically a coup, um, a, like a wedding to a sister that they weren't engaged. Like it's, I don't, I don't 
know what pace books you read or what you consider fast paced, but like, what? So this book, I could eat, like summarize, it is literally a combination of every part of popular, commonly known YA fantasies in the last few years. And it takes the parts of them that I love the most. And I like was reading this and I was like, oh, that's like Air Awakens. Oh, that's like Throne of Glass. Oh, I remember this in the Remnant Chronicles. Oh my God, that is from Snow of Ashes. Like it, and those are all series I thoroughly enjoy. So this was my trash. And then it started pulling in all of these aspects of colonization. So there was opium involved, which like the opium wars with China and it was just, oh, I loved, I loved, I loved it so much. The main characters are two sisters and they don't hate each other. There is a rivalry that their mother has essentially pitted in. But like there's, oh yeah, there's a lineage reveal, which once again, like check on the trope tick list. Um, but, and they don't hate each other, but they're pitted against each other. And like, even when they have like this dual battle thing, there isn't this like sister detest, I hate you because you're always better than me or prettier than me. It, or, there is, but it isn't. And it's just, I don't know, it's just written very differently. And like, there, I think, I think the, with the tropes used and the things that was used, the author wrote this very, very well. So it wasn't toxic or um, like pitting girls against each other or anything like that. I liked the setting. I liked that the romances were super low key background. They were not by any means the main focal point. Both of the sisters, I hesitate to call one of them a romance, but there is like a marriage, but one sister has like something of lust and one has, and one sister has something there out of duty. And there is emotion there, it seems like, but I don't think that's going to stay as is. I just, I have this inkling feeling. The ending is insane. That battle thing with like worlds dropping out and like universes like separating and like, I don't, there's someone transforming into a werewolf. I don't even understand how someone considers this slow. I just, um, anyways, I also, this is a book where like, I, I, this is, it just bugs me when I read fantasy books where it's like, and then they walked for two days. And then they arrived at this village and we're just going to pick up at this village. And my brain is just like, you couldn't think of anything that could have happened while they were traveling for those two days. Like we're just skipping over those 48 something hours or whatever. That, that annoys me. This book doesn't do that. That is probably one of the reasons why I appreciate Outlander so much because they're uh, either always getting like kidnapped or raided in the, in those, those books. This is the same sort of thing that there is always something happening. Like always, no matter if they're adventuring or if they're idling in a specific place, it's just really, really cool. There are just, there's just so much potential for the rest of the series. I think it's supposed to be a trilogy. I'm just very excited to see where it goes. And yeah, I just, I like the role of the romances. There is a little bit, but it's nothing major. It's nothing like, tr like one true pairing or anything like that. It focuses on the sisters. It focuses on their magic. It focuses on their relationships with other people as well as each other. I, my only criticism, and I ended up giving this book like a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I hate to be that person to not just give it the full five, but it really does lack structure with the magic and paranormal aspects. It's just non-existent almost. I'm hoping that's going to be developed more. I don't know if it was because the main character is kind of ignorant of it, but even then, I don't think she was as ignorant of it as the book makes me feel. It just was a lot of like, well, if he said that's capable, then I guess that checks out. I guess that should be capable in this king, this world, right? It, whereas, like, you, you get some structure in a lot of things, like Snow of Ashes, or you get a general concept of the vague rules, at least, which I think really, really we're missing in this. And that could just be because I believe this is a debut author, um, or it's just going to develop more in the next books. Either way, I'm excited for it. I'm going to read the sequel. And this author is on my watch list, because, like, man, I'm trash for this book. Like, absolute trash. So those are the books that I read in the last few weeks. Let me know in the comment section down below what you read these past few weeks. I'm sorry it was gone. Um, and let, or let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought. Would love to hear. Make sure to check the description box down below. I will link all of these books to the Goodreads pages and it will also link all of my social media. Oh my god, I just realized I forgot to add in here that I read Artemis Fowl too. <sighs> this was like, I did it like I forgot to add it like two videos ago. I'm sorry. I, I read Artemis Fowl, okay, by Eon Colfin because the trailer came out. It looks like it's going to be cool and I'm excited to see however the heck that develops and I want to try and get to the rest of the series eventually. It would have been a really cool book to read when I was middle grade especially. But yeah, those are the books that I read this week. Check the description box down below. Goodreads links and my social media are all going to be down there. And if you follow me, I will follow you back. I am sorry. I'm such a hot mess right now. <laughs>